Welcome to the dark side of travel. So you've dared to come jaunt with me. Thank you. Let me introduce myself. I'm Courtney Maroc, Ambassador of Dark and Paranormal Tourism for Haunt Jaunts, a destination for restless spirits who dig hauntings, true crime, horror, Halloween, and weird days. I'll be your host and guide for this listening adventure. Looks like we've been cleared for takeoff, so buckle up, sit back, and enjoy the ride. Okay, I think I think it's working. Well, we'll hope for the best. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for your time. I'm so excited to get to talk to you all. Yeah, well, yeah. thank you for having us. Yeah, we appreciate it. Yay! And um, also, congratulations on season two. I think a lot of people are like, whoa, they're already back. This is exciting. Yeah, thank you very much. It happened really fast. That's awesome. It's good, though, because... We all need some entertainment during, <laughs> during this time of our lives. We find, are you guys doing okay, speaking of all the coronavirus stuff? I mean, yeah, me and Tanner, we're here in Las Vegas. Uh, we live together, and, you know, we've been good. Luckily, yeah. we've been editing the show here in Vegas, so we've had a lot of stuff to do. But uh, what about you, Charles? I've just been doing online classes and quizzes and tests and pretty much how my life was before just now it's all virtual and online (laughs) oh my gosh so all of you guys are keeping that's good what are you studying chelsea i'm in school to be an optometrist i'm in my last year oh that's right i think you said that but i mean i probably read it i just didn't didn't brain fart sorry (laughs) they happen a little bit more (laughs) frequently a lot to keep track of (laughs) Oh, that's, that's okay. <laughs> and I have a question. Okay. How about you? Me? I've been great. I, I'm in Nashville, so um, Music City sort of, you know, like everywhere else, shut down. But, you know, I'm healthy, so that's good. <laughs> that's the plot. That's, that's always good. good. Yes. That's one of my favorite cities. Really? Yes, I love country, and I've been there. Um, only one time, but it was, like, the most fun I've ever had before. So, I love it. I'm definitely going back. <laughs> ah, that's so exciting. Yay. And the, all the people that are doing the tourist stuff right now will be very happy to hear that because, wow, we're really hurting. I imagine a lot like Vegas. I don't – where are you at, Chelsea? Um, Right now, I'm in Minnesota, actually, at my – like, my parents' home because I moved out of Chicago. And I actually just brought all my stuff back. So I'll be spending um, this next year, though, rotating across the country at different externship sites. So it's kind of like one of those things where I take off a little bit of time to do the show. And then it's it's kind of I'm able to make it work so far. So it's kind of like a juggling act, but it's. It's happening. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, that was going to be my question. Like, what will happen with the show then? <laughs> yeah, I actually took off some time from school just because it's um, the part of my schooling where I'm able to kind of do that. It's not like everything builds this last year. It's just externship sites. So it's kind of like a residency um, where you are at different clinics for a chunk of the year. So um, I just have to, like, tag that on on the tail end or schedule it another time um so before i can graduate i just have to finish the four rotations so oh kind of got that's cool yeah that's super and that's awesome that you have that flexibility cool (laughs) um okay so i have a a lot of people have to work around it oh but 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 they're willing to and that's awesome yes i agree Oh, nice. And I have a question. I got to watch um, the the screener. Thank you so, Stephanie, of the, the your first episode for season two. And I have no idea. I'm going to not say it right because I how it looks to me and how you guys say it, it it's not. Hopefully it will come out. Is it no pemming? Yeah, you got it. Yeah, yeah I even got a clap. That's even better. Woo! <laughs> um, <laughs> Okay, so the very first, well, not the very first thing I noticed this episode, but something that definitely 
jump down. This won't be a spoiler. Well, it's not really a spoiler to the plot at all. Um, is you guys all have these great masks on, which pre, you know, <laughs> coronavirus, I would be like, oh, those must yeah. keep your mouth. But can you use those during this time? Yeah, no, that's one of the benefits. I mean, we would have shot a whole season in some of the dirtiest buildings in the country, so we have we all have this stockpile of masks, and now we can use them for quarantine. <laughs> that's awesome. When <laughs> when ghost hunting equipment comes in handy for coronavirus apocalypse. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, that's awesome. That's funny. I never even thought of that. <laughs> And um, I, I, the, the other thing that I think if anybody Googled, um, okay, I'm going to try it again, no pemming. Um, if they, they Google yeah. that, they'll see it's very much like, um, it's Minnesota's Waverly Hills, right? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. That's the really well. I mean, it definitely has Hills. different stories, but. Yeah, totally. I mean, it's uh, it's like growing up. When we all grew up, we were really into, like, scary abandoned buildings, and the Nopeming Sanatorium was always on our bucket list. There's a location that we've been dying to explore and spend the night in, and me and Tanner and Alex, we even drove up there about five years ago to just see the building in person. We didn't go inside, but we watched the property, and it was such, a, like, a nightmare slash dream come true to actually be able to spend the night in this massive abandoned sanatorium. Mm-hmm. It, you're completely right. I think um, the correlation between Waverly and Nopeming are pretty close. I mean, both of them were built for um, patients who had tuberculosis back in the 1920s, and um, a lot of people have perished from that. And uh, we were lucky enough to get access to Nopeming and get inside, and it was one of our dreams come true because, I mean, being Minnesotans ourselves, um, it was always the one place we wanted to get into but didn't know how to uh, do it the right way. Oh, wow. And then you did right now. But so wild that you did it in the middle of winter. Holy cow. I mean, you saw the episode. You saw there's some hallways that are four to five inches of ice where you literally have to, like, slide down them. You can't walk. That And it's funny you bring that up because I was going to say the walls glistening, were that was crazy cool. But then I was, and you yeah. didn't show it in the episode, but did you guys, like, have a little fun, like, getting a running start and sliding down any of the hallways, or no? <laughs> we did a little bit of that, yeah. There, yeah. there was some uh, some falls, too, that didn't make the cut for some accidental flips. Yeah. Oh, so, oh no. Oh, like, it was a whole different experience in the winter. Oh, we definitely could have brought our yeah. hockey skates. <laughs> We definitely could have brought our hockey skates. Yeah. yeah. 100%. That's awesome. That would make quite the episode. Yeah. <laughs> or the blooper reel. <laughs> um, yeah, right. yeah, exactly. And do you think that, do you have any theories about whether, um, whether, whether affects the, um, the environment, like the, you know, from a paranormal standpoint at all? Yeah, I mean, like, part of our part, part of our experiment really with this whole road trip is it's on fear and just putting ourselves in some of like the most uncomfortable situations and how much we can handle. And I don't know if the cold actually brought out more energy uh, compared to the summer, but it definitely took away energy from us, and it made it like it made a very really big impact on the whole trip. It was just a a whole different obstacle that we weren't used to, and. The one thing I will say about the winter, though, is it's two to three extra hours of nighttime. So we were in these buildings this road trip for an extra two to three hours every night. So instead of 12 hours, it's like 14 to 15. Oh. Oh, so you at least got the bonus time. That's interesting. Yeah, because that didn't look much like glamping at all, or and it would just look yeah. cold. <laughs> yeah. yeah it, was. it was cold. The whole road trip was freezing, terrifying. Oh, ah, as cool awesome. as no coming is, <laughs> as awesome as it is, um, and it's a place that we all wanted to go to, like, our, our whole life, 
but it also, I did not want to go there in the winter, to be totally honest with you. Mm-hmm. We had to, like, shovel to get in to the building, and it was, like, six feet of snow, like, pushed off to the side. We couldn't even get the RV up to the yeah. Um, I did see where it was like some of those snow banks were taller than you are. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, my gosh. Crazy. And were you... And on top of that, that location was scary. Like, it was probably... Well, it definitely exceeded my expectations and just how freaky it was and by looks alone. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, definitely. Well, and the, the crazy thing is, is when you're in these places and it's freezing, you're so focused on your body and like trying to stay warm that you kind of let your guard down a little bit. And when you let your guard down, that's when usually stuff starts to pick up or things will happen. And that was very evident that night. Yeah. Oh, big time. And were you guys, did you guys see any, um, it's a little cold i don't know what might be out but did you see any um wildlife in there at all or evidence that any had been in there i mean that was the difference between this road trip and our first season the summer road trip we did was a lot of wildlife this time around hardly any uh you could see evidence of them from maybe there being animals in there in the summertime but the winter time this whole road trip we hardly had any animal encounters mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. This is a plus, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that wouldn't have been a place to all of a sudden meet a hibernating bear or a wolf or something, no. Yeah. Exactly. I'm not a very good uh, animal wrangler. I mean, no. like, Pemming Sanatorium, so the, the word no Pemming actually means into the woods. So it means into the woods sanatorium. And, like, if people, if they Google it or search this sanatorium, I mean, it literally is in the middle of the woods in Minnesota, away from everything. Oh, gosh. Yeah, because they would have wanted it to not, you know, have any chance of contaminating or probably other people and stuff. Um, And when you said that it's one of the, like, it met your expectations, have you gone anywhere yet that you didn't? Like, you were like, oh, I was, nah, that wasn't as scary as I thought. Yeah, I mean, we've gone to some places. I think, like, last road trip there was uh, a few in particular, like, uh, episode two of last season, the Old South Hospital. It was creepy, and we had mm-hmm. some encounters, but we were, at the end of that night, we were like, from the stories, compared to what we experienced, we must have just gotten pretty lucky. Right. But And uh, we've also had, like, the complete inverse of that happen, like, uh, the Statler Hotel or, like, Sweet Spring Sanatorium, where we're both, we're all kind of like, oh, I don't know if this is going to be as scary. I mean, Sweet Springs sounds like a nice place, a hotel, like, I don't know, that sounds nice. And then, you know, by the end of the night, we're running out of both locations pretty much. Yeah. Oh, gosh, that's all. I mean, it's not awesome, but that's a great uh, experience that, that it <laughs> did the, the inverse of that. I didn't even think to ask that, so I'm glad you brought that up, Tanner. <laughs> oh, and I have a, a question. <laughs> I have a question for Tanner. All the clips they showed when you're in the basement, you're sitting you're sitting on your cot. Did you ever lay down on it at all through that whole night? There was one time I think I I, I don't I, honestly my whole strategy is to sit up and be ready to run. <laughs> like I watch I'm the guy who watches scary movies and I'm the one yelling at the TV going like okay pick up the gun or don't go in that room start running that's where the bad guy is so like I'm always like all right if I'm in this situation like I'm gonna be like very alert and get out when I want to and I don't know like I've never I've always thought of just like laying down and putting a sleeping bag around me and zipping it up is just packaging myself for you know the monster (laughs) <laughs> you guys should bring a little bow and then put it on him. <laughs> yeah, no, no, exactly. I mean, for anyone who doesn't know what we're talking about right now, <laughs> we go to bed at these locations. We actually separate and sleep alone halfway through the night, and we all agree as a group on the scariest spots. We draw out of a hat, and that's where we go sleep. And so, be on different levels, completely 100 yards away from each other. Different building. building. And Tanner has the tactic of sitting up all night for four hours. Like I find I edit the show and I find it crazy. Like there's times where 
I cut to everyone's cameras and everyone is silent and laying and Tanner's still up like painting the flashlight like full alert. It's, yeah. it's a good tactic though. It's a it's a strategy and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> <laughs> it gets you alive this far. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Don't change it now. It's working. No. Don't fix it. Exactly. That's funny. And um, I have a. I had put a question out if um anybody had questions to ask you guys, and I got one from a friend of mine named Priscilla Bettis, and she wanted to know if um you guys thought it was scarier to have something thrown at you or to have an unseen entity whisper in your ear. Oh, my gosh. Okay, well, we haven't had anything thrown at us ever, luckily, but we have had objects move in front of us, and, mm-hmm. and that is terrifying. But I've never heard a whisper in my ear. I don't think any of us have, and that could take – I don't know. That's tough. Damn. I mean, on one hand, you have, like, an object that's not supposed to be moving, move, moving. which is not supposed to happen. And then on the other hand, you have something that's – really, really close to you talking that's not supposed to be talking. That's, that's I'd, tough. I'd rather hear a whisper, I think, than get thrown. Yeah, I feel like the whisper, like, if you look at, like, the positive side, like, it could say something positive. I feel like anything throwing anything at you is never a good sign. No. <laughs> like, I, I would disagree with you. I, if something whispered in my ear, I would be out of there so fast. <laughs> if something was thrown, I could make sense of like it falling or something physically happening like that wasn't like paranormal but a whisper is a whisper and I'm out yeah <laughs> okay fair fair enough <laughs> <laughs> No, it's, 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 it really, that is a tough one. She asked that. I was like, I, I don't know. I'm going to have to, I don't even know what I would say. That's a great question. Um, yeah. It's like a would you rather. But it's, yeah. It's would you rather get beamed in the head with a rock or have somebody whisper in your ear? And okay, beamed in the head. <laughs> I don't think I'd want to get beamed in the head. I didn't know that <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want anybody getting beamed in the head either. <laughs> um, and are you guys getting less scared? Like, are you getting desensitized at all? Um, I would say that to an extent, yes. I think we've gotten better at chasing the fear versus running from it, uh, which is something that we wanted to get better at. And we're we're not there yet, but we're getting better. Like, before we would have the crazy experience and just kind of, freak out and not really get as, you know, we wouldn't go back as much, but now this time around, if we had an experience, we would just suck it up and go back into that room and try to get more answers. And I think that's something we got better at, but in terms of being scared, I don't know about you guys, but for me, I still am equally as scared as I was from day one when we started this. 100%. Yeah. I think more scared because now we've had more encounters. Yeah, I think oh. just because we know what can happen now, like, you know that, like, I don't know, it's just, like, the more you know, kind of, I don't know if that helps or hurts you. Um, but another kind of route to go with the whole desensitization thing we were talking about was, you know, in the winter, we're, we're totally geared up. We're in, like, tons and tons of layers of clothing, and I feel like that takes away a little bit of the vulnerability of feeling, like, something could touch you or like I just felt like because I was wearing so many layers that I kind of lost a little bit of that sense um so I don't know if that was because of you know I had more experience um by staying at these locations or because of just being so bundled up oh that's a really interesting observation because yeah you I mean something would like almost literally have to push you guys I didn't even think make that because you guys are really, bu- I mean, from head to toe, it's boots, hats, gloves, those big mat. I mean, everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. You a lot of hand warmers. <laughs> ooh, a lot of hand ooh. warmers. Oh, <laughs> that, now I'm kind of surprised the ghost didn't want to come try to touch you to figure out what those were. Um <laughs> and, <laughs> I guess I just have one last question for you guys. Do you have any... um Favorite episodes are like, like if you could tell people, yeah, tune in. This was my favorite moment or episode for this upcoming season. Yeah, I mean, I'll start. My favorite, I love the 
premier, no pending, just because it's hometown. It's a massive abandoned sanatorium that not many people have heard of. But my ultimate favorite is our finale. It's the Sheboygan County Asylum in Wisconsin. And we were the first crew ever allowed inside to film. We spent an entire night. And I had a personal experience there that really, really affected me. I'm not going to say exactly what, but it was during my sleeping arrangement. And it left me pretty traumatized, honestly. And I'm not, if we end up going back on the road and doing this again, like I'm really nervous because of what happened to me there. What about mm-hmm. you guys? I might be biased, but uh, I don't know. Episode two is kind of cool because yeah. I got to actually check that location. So yeah, um, I'm, I'm just gonna go with that one. <laughs> well, oh, that's cool. That's one thing really. That's one thing that's kind of cool is this season. I last season I picked all the locations, and I was the only one who knew where we were going. This time around, I picked the first one, but then Chelsea picked the second one. Me and Tanner didn't know where she picked, and then the third one, Tanner, you picked, and I, me and Chelsea didn't know where you picked. Mm-hmm. So everyone got a little say in this road trip, which is cool. What about you? What was your saying? Yeah, I, would, I mean, again, I'm, I'm going to go with Chelsea a little bit. I'm a little biased because I like uh, the third episode. Um, have we released the location yet? Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, Montana State Prison, old Montana State Prison. And uh, I know it's just one of those uh, locations that uh, once I found out about it, I was just gravitated towards it right away. I thought the history was absolutely amazing. I don't want to get too much away because I can't wait for people to check it out. But, um, yeah, that one's definitely one of my favorites. And Chelsea's at number two is in Texas, and it's a hospital that used to be run by, like, nuns and priests. And, like, people today report nuns and a demon in the chapel. Like, it was one of the creepiest locations ever, Chelsea. Like, yeah. gosh. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, pretty creepy. And, Apparently, I was the only one who wanted to go down south in the middle of winter, which, again, that, that kind of shocked me. <laughs> I didn't know where you got to stick. Yeah, that was the thing. Like, I picked Minnesota, but then Chelsea picked Texas next, so it was a long drive because he didn't know where I was picking. Like 26 hours or so. And then Tanner picks Montana after Texas, and then we're back up north for another 20-hour drive. Oh no! Once again, we have no idea where we're going. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. oh, and I I thought of one other question based on what you guys are. Is there any place like if one of you guys picked something and and you didn't know, but you got there and you're like, oh no, I'm out. I'm I'm absolutely not even gonna go in there. Ooh. I mean, oh, that happens a lot. Yeah, <laughs> it does happen frequently. Uh, there's some places outside of the country, like Paveglia Island in Italy, that would really, really challenge myself. I don't know if I'd want to do that. Yeah. I don't know personally if I could do the Paris Catacombs. Yeah. I don't know if I could actually wander all those tunnels. Oh. There's a few places. Honestly, I love a Sweet challenge. Springs. I don't think I could go back to Sweet Springs. Yeah. We season went, one. Yeah, season one, we went to Sweet Springs Sanatorium in West Virginia, and it was probably one of our more traumatizing nights. That might Ooh. be the one in the U.S. that we could all not want to go back to. Wow. 100%. I mean, I'm almost at that level with the Sheboygan Asylum, our sixth episode this season coming up. It's uh, it's pretty messy. Yeah. Up. Oh, well, and that's, that's the season finale, right? Yep, yeah, correct. Oh wow! So sweet, so, and they both start with that sweet springs in Sheboygan. That could be a tongue twister. Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, I I don't want to hold you guys. I know you probably have a million more calls to do, but I just want to thank you. This has been an awesome conversation, and thank you for your time. And I hope you have a great season two. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks. Um, talk to you guys later. Bye. 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 You've been listening to Haunt Johns, a podcast for restless spirits. My name is Courtney Maroc, and it's been my pleasure to be your host and guide for this journey. I snag the music, Phantom from Space, from Kevin McLeod at Incompetech. If you'd like to continue exploring beyond the podcast, jaunt with me online anytime at hauntjaunts.net. Or if you liked what you heard, be sure to subscribe to Haunt Jaunts wherever you get your podcasts from. 
You can also jaunt with me socially on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. You'll find links to all of Haunt Jaunt's social media on the website, as well as a player on the podcast page with all of the episodes. Thank you so much for tuning in. Until our paths cross again, ciao for now.